What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm the Crypto Crow. It is about 11.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I am going to talk a little bit about the top five dividend stocks that you can buy right now that are recession-proof, for the most part, and uh, get them on Robinhood app, which I am learning to love more and more and more. Uh, it was originally what I used when I first got into stocks, and uh, way before I got into cryptocurrencies, and I'm um, also watching Bitcoin take a dive, uh, literally as I write this, and uh, it's it's not pretty. I'm going to throw my glasses on real quick here. Um, but uh, yeah, Bitcoin's taking a bit of a dive on a four-hour chart. You know, we were, we were going through this accumulation uh, period through here. And I mean, really a lot, all of this kind of an accumulation period. And typically after an accumulation period, you're either going to break up or down. It looks like it's going down. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, uh, once we get to this over oversold position on the RSI, hopefully we'll get a bounce. Look at this. I mean, you can watch it. It's just dropping as I record this. So moving forward, let's get to what we're here for um, now. Here's the thing. When it comes to the traditional stock market, I mean, right now you're basically able to get everything at a discount, okay? Because of the virus, because of the world in panic, there is so much blood in the streets, which is the time to buy. This is not the time to panic sell. This is not the time to lose your positions. If anything, if you have the means, this is the time to average down. Now, I'm also going to say, I've got disclaimers everywhere. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Don't listen to me. Talk to your financial advisor. Do your own homework. Do your due diligence on everything. Never put any money into anything just because some YouTuber that looks smart. I don't know if I look that smart. But if I do, don't listen to me anyway. <laughs> Use what I say uh, as a guide to lead you in the right direction to continue doing your own research. Now, this video, it's just five. It's five traditional stocks that are recession-proof dividend stocks. I'm going to discuss them a little bit, their costs, what they do, and what you can get out of holding them. Uh, but if this video does well, I'm going to be following up with some more diamonds in the rough. I'm going to be doing a lot of research moving forward in the traditional dividend stock market. These are kind of easy. I will be very straight up. They're kind of easy. Uh, but I think that they're going to prove to be very useful uh, for you as well moving forward. Now, I'm going to pull up this and let's see here. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Where is my view hold on where'd it go it was here earlier there it is okay they hide the tab uh oh it just okay <laughs> i'll just bring this up here all right so i'll just use this here and it'll be a lot of you i've never used i don't really use this for videos much i typically just go live but anyway here we go um the number one uh, on this list is Procter and Gamble. Now, obviously, with the uh, the market where it is, toilet paper being sold out everywhere, uh, you know, Procter and Gamble is one of the big ones. And I actually happen to live like 15 minutes from it. Actually, one of my cousins is a scientist at Procter and Gamble. Uh, she was one of the scientists apparently that was responsible for the Tide Stick that takes out stains in your clothes. And uh, hi, Emily. Um, so anyway, Procter & Gamble, ticker P and PG, uh, its sector is staples industry, household products. Uh, during the, the last recession, S&P 500 lost 55% from 2007 to 2009. Procter & Gamble shares lost only 36% with a dividend growth streak of 61 years. In business since 1837, Procter & Gamble is one of the world's largest consumer staples companies, selling 65 products in over 180 countries. Its strong portfolio of brands includes 21 products, which generate over $1 billion in annual sales. Basically, just about anything you touch in the household aisle is probably from Procter & Gamble or at, very, uh, at the very least from one of the companies that I'm talking about. Uh, the dividend yield is 2.9%. Now, in comparison to some other dividend stocks that are like smaller market caps and, uh, you know, lesser established companies, 2.9% isn't insanely high, but it's also pretty decent. Uh, at $110 a share currently, 
um, it's 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 had a significant drop. All these have had a significant drop because of the current market, which is what I'm saying. You buy when blood is in the streets. You average down. You buy in while it's cheap. You buy the dips, and it's already starting to go up a bit. Uh, annualized payout is almost three dollars, and that's broken up into quarterly payments. So every few months, you'll get a dividend payment on your Robinhood app that you'll be able to use to either invest into something else, or you'll be able to hold. And you know, based on how many shares of any stock you have, um, you'll just see it. You'll see the funds pop up in your Robinhood app as as investable or spendable funds. Uh, payout ratio is at 60 percent with a dividend growth of sixty three years, which is really uh it's really crazy i mean that's really really good now if i'm going to look at the chart here you're going to be able to see this dip here uh you know up almost 130 dollars as i when i took this screenshot today it was 104 already moving up it's down during this market crash 26 percent uh now when you're think when you're looking at this you're like wow that's huge but when you compare that to what the s p 500 and everything what, what it's not that bad okay so number two on this list, Johnson and Johnson, currently one hundred and twenty three dollars and sixteen cents, uh, a three percent dividend yield. So a little bit higher. I know you have Johnson and Johnson products in your household right now. Annualized payout of three dollars and eighty cents paid quarterly payout ratio of forty two point three zero percent with a dividend growth over fifty seven years. Uh, Johnson and Johnson, it's in the healthcare sector. It's a pharmaceuticals industry. It's in the pharmaceuticals industry. S and P lost 55% from 2007, 2009 and Johnson and Johnson shares only lost 27%. It's the largest global medical conglomerate with over 250 subsidiaries operating across more than 60 countries. The firm's three business segments provide J&J with a very diversified mix of revenue earnings and cash flow. However, the pharmaceuticals division is the largest contributor, accounting for over half of the pre-tax profits. Go figure. Big Pharma at its best. Uh, looking at the chart, again, pretty significant dip here. This looks like, uh, I mean, this is a pretty significant dip. Down to $119 at the time I took this screenshot. Uh, down from, it looks like about 155 bucks uh, on the high. So a great opportunity to buy in uh, pretty cheap. And if you're looking at this, this is these recession proof stocks. I mean, they they perform uh, year after year. And I will say that when you're buying into dividend stocks, you want to make sure that you understand that if there's a change up in management uh, in terms of, you know, how that how the uh, the payment structure is situated, you might see your dividends get go down. And that's also a sign that the company isn't performing very well. But as these uh, these stocks are typically considered very recession proof, you shouldn't run into a lot of that stuff. And if, if anything, I've, I've seen some of the dividend payouts grow over time. Uh, if the company's doing extremely well, the dividends typically go up to draw in more investors, and uh, that's pretty solid to me. It's one of the reasons why I love dividends. I mean, I'm not one to uh, swing trade uh, the traditional stock market or just regular stocks. I'm definitely a hodler by nature. I hold my cryptocurrencies. I hold everything I invest in. If I if I believe enough in it to buy into it, I'm just going to hold it and ride the wave up and down, whatever direction it goes, expecting to win in the long run anyway. And the hodler from a the, the hodler mentality when it comes to investing, you're typically improving your odds of, of improving your position over time over swing trading. Because if you're swing trading or you're trying to scalp trades or whatever the case may be, the vast majority of, of traders lose more than they invest. Uh, they it's it's just the nature of things. It becomes a drug. You get addicted, and it's it's a high, and it's almost it almost becomes like gambling. And then you get into leverage trading and things like that. And I just talked to a buddy of mine who just got liquidated for three Bitcoin because he did a five X leverage trade with three Bitcoin. The market crashed. He got liquidated. Now he's upset. And I tell everybody on my channel, don't get into leverage trading. It's a trick. Uh, but anyway, moving forward, Coca-Cola, uh, consumer staples sector with inter with soft drinks. Everybody drinks something from Coca-Cola. It's either Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Pepsi could be on this list, but this one does a Coke does a little bit better than Pepsi does. So here it is. Uh, S and P lost fifty five percent. Coca-Cola lost only thirty one percent. Dividend growth streak of fifty five years. 
Coca-Cola is the world's largest beverage seller, marketing over 3,900 products under 500 brands in more than 200 countries and territories via 24 million retail markets. The company owns 21 brands that generate over $1 billion in sales, including Coke, Powerade, Dasani, and Simply, and Simply and Minute Maid juices. So anyway, dividend yield of 3.7%, one of the highest I've seen uh, recently. Annualized payout of $1.64, that's paid quarterly. Current share price of $42.81 with a 75% payout ratio, dividend growth over 57 years. Looking at the chart, wow, look at that discount. It's down 20 freaking dollars. It's almost a third you're able to get Coca-Cola on discount, ladies and gentlemen, down from a high of $60 all the way down to 40 bucks. We are in oversold territory, uh, which you can't really see behind me. But if you're if I'm if you're looking at this right now and you go pull it up on a chart, you're way down into oversold territory, which, you know, in a lot of cases means that the price is likely to reverse sometime sooner than later. Uh, but, in, you know, looking at the, the history here, it looks like uh, this could start turning around within the next couple days. So if I were basically putting money into it, I'd probably start picking up some Coca-Cola now while it's cheap. Uh, next up, Altria. Now, I was hesitant about putting this up here because I don't really like the idea of promoting uh, tobacco-based products, even though I use some myself. Uh, but this is an investment. This isn't something, uh, this isn't like a political speech, and I'm not on any sandbox or soapbox. <laughs> Dividend yield of 9.78%. Annualized payout of 3.36%. Excuse me, $3.36 with a payout ratio of 76.14%. Uh, dividend growth over the last 11 years. Altria only lost 20% against the S&P 500's 55%, which is really, really good. Despite the long-term secular decline in U.S. smoking rates, Altria has managed to become one of the best-performing stocks of the last few decades thanks to its advantaged business, business model. America's largest tobacco company commands dominant market share as a result of its portfolio of leading cigarette brands, including Marlboro, Parliament, Virginia Slims, and Benson and & Hedges brands, not to mention all the other stuff. I know that they've been getting into like the vape products and, and all of that sort of stuff. I mean, these guys, I don't see them going anywhere. They're smart. Um, and to think about it, the, the, the very nature of tobacco users is that they are extremely brand loyal. I mean, there's no secret there. You don't see people buy a pack of Marlboros today and then go buy a pack of Newports tomorrow unless one of them is a lot cheaper than the other the next day, right? So brand loyalty, is, and, and they probably have that too. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm guessing they own that company as well. Uh, but the point is, is that people that get addicted to this stuff early on, like I did, I mean, I started uh, a lot of this stuff when I was like 15 years old. Uh, and, and I actually started smoking and joined a boxing gym. And then, you know, a group of my friends and I, we all thought, well, let's start dipping instead because it would help our cardio. <laughs> all of those guys went back to smoking. I basically stuck with dipping all these years. And uh, I really regret doing it. I don't advise anybody to take up smoking. It's terrible for you, obviously. It's going to kill you, most likely. Um, and uh, But, you know, look, as a company, they do pretty well. So I, I guess that's, that could be a moral dilemma for some, and I wouldn't blame you. Moving forward, last on the list, the, the top five, recession-proof, recession Kimberly Clark, another consumer staples and household products. Um, down only 34% against the S&P uh, 500's 55%. Like Procter & Gamble, Kimberly, Kimberly Clark is a time-tested consumer staples behemoth selling name-brand products as Cottonelle toilet paper, all of which is sold out, Scott paper towels, and Huggies diapers in over 175 countries around the world. Emerging markets account for around 30% of its sales, and it was established in 1872. Uh, dividend yield of 3.45% with an annualized payout of $4.28. Not too shabby. Currently at $124, almost $125 a share. Payout ratio of 58.71% and a dividend growth over 47 years. 
Uh, looking at the chart again, like everything else, taking a pretty significant dip down about 30 bucks since its uh, recent price high. And uh, it was down all the way. I mean, it wicked down to $110 and it's starting to move back up. So this is an opportunity, folks, to get some really good stuff on the cheap. And by clicking the link in my description, you and I both will get a free stock. We don't know what it is, but it's been kind of fun for me. Uh, there are a lot of resources out there uh, that pertain to dividend stocks. There's a lot of cool stuff that I'm using to help me with my own research uh, and diving into a lot of these things. The app is a lot of fun to use, and you can actually buy fractional shares now, which is, well, it says it right here. You can buy introducing fractional shares. Uh, you can buy cryptocurrency using the Robinhood app. So um, check it out. And if you like this video, I know that a lot of these stocks that I just mentioned, especially you know Procter and Gamble, I mean, it, the majority of them are staples in the dividend stock community, right? Um, there are some dividend stocks that pay out over like 50%, but they're small market crap. And so I'm diving into a lot of this stuff to see if I can't find some diamonds in the rough. And uh, if you have an interest in this information, I know I'm the crypto crow and I'm still all about crypto, but when the market is the way it is, I'm looking at buying blood. I'm well in, investing when there's blood in the streets and there's blood in the streets in traditional markets as well as crypto. So it's kind of one of those things that, uh, you know, you can take your dividends from your traditional stocks and invest those into crypto if you're trying to find a little hedgeway. Pretty much everything I do is about crypto for the most part, but I'm looking at uh, traditional investments as well because I, I really do think it's time long term uh, just to get in a little bit and start building a nice solid dividend income portfolio. And uh, so on that note, guys, crow your coins and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining me.